Agree or disagree with Mr. Pinto, Lori? Well, first of all, we think 2018 and 19 will be good years for equities. Again, against a backdrop of synchronized, expanded global growth, uh, we think that there is room for stocks to move higher. But we, too, are concerned that as we move from monetary easing to monetary tightening, that there are likely to be a lot more bumps along the way. What about the impact of tariffs? We know that the largest categories of U.S. imports from China, for example, are electrical equipment, machinery, uh, furniture. The chart 5204 showing you that tech industrials and consumer stocks could be the worst to suffer. Do you still invest in those sectors and will these sectors see a bigger downside than anywhere else? Well, first and foremost, we hope that we don't get ourselves into a really sticky trade situation here. Uh, this volley around uh, tariffs certainly unsettled the markets broadly, and anything that would be um, an escalation of the rhetoric or the actual uh, tariffs that we're talking about would ultimately be bad for markets because it would be potentially inflationary. It could take some of the steam out of consumer confidence, and all the way around, it just would not be a good situation. Certainly, some of the sectors you mentioned uh, cons consumer goods, for example, would be one of the places that could be inflationary for end consumers, and thereby there would be a little less demand there for sure. So, Laurie, based on that, are you taking any action or are you waiting to see for a bit how things play out before you do that? <sighs> Yeah. So look, um, a lot of this is noise and it's hard to really divine exactly what the future will look like. So what we were looking at even as recently as a couple of days ago is now translating to a, a bit more muted implementation of these tariffs. So we will definitely be parsing through what the global response is. But we think that in the end, cooler heads will prevail. And so we go back to fundamentals. Fundamentals are good. Uh, global growth continues to improve. Uh, we continue to see no signs of uh, significant inflation pressures and so we're still constructive on risk assets yeah in your notes you actually say that you don't expect to see a big jump in inflation this year is that because you're expecting productivity to offset that well, there are a couple of things. Um, first of all, you typically get a lot of inflation coming from more of a wage price kind of a spiral. And while there are certain pockets where we're seeing some wage pressure, it's not something that is systemic. And so we're not seeing um, any kind of pressures for wages to rise. And in fact, the recent tax cuts could actually improve the labor participation rate, which would help keep a damper on wage inflation. The other bit of it is, you know, to the degree that um, you do see some productivity gains, and we're just starting starting to see businesses invest some of that tax cut into capital goods, which could further productivity gains, that will keep a damper. We don't think that's going to be a big story for 2018, but that will become more important into 2019 and still keep inflation relatively low. Laurie, what kind of rate of return are you guys aiming for at State Street these days? <laughs> well, more than we're likely to get. <laughs> but, but, but realistically, we think equities can give us high single-digit returns this year. Uh, clearly, we're, we were out of the gate really strong in January. It's been a bit bumpy since there. Well, depending upon the day, we're eking out a, a slight positive. But again, if you just think about um, the improved global GDP backdrop, a company's continuation of being efficient, uh, a little bit of uh, benefit from the tax reform that we're seeing, and we think that equity, equities could deliver in the sort of high single digits this year. Having said that, uh, the ECB, yes, uh, they seem pretty positive about the outlook for their economy this morning. But the chart 5122 showing you also that exports growth is one of the major contributors to that growth that you see in Europe. So I don't want to speculate here and I don't want to make you speculate, but mm -hmm. if we see even a hint of trade tensions between the U.S. and Europe, which we are already doing, how much downside mm -hmm. risk is there to the European economy and their markets? So that's a great point. And, and as you mentioned, Europe is an area that's been especially attractive. And we've been overweight to Europe, both because of the improving growth trajectory, but also it's been a better value market. So uh, the, the European markets aren't quite as high from a, uh, a PE perspective, for, for example. But look, trade wars are bad for everybody. Uh, they're in the, in the short term, and we saw this happen just earlier this week, it's going to be a negative market reaction because the fear of how that escalates who the winners and losers are, what the ultimate impact to your final demand, inflation, all those things become very, very muddled when you get into that discussion. So it's only after mm -hmm. the fact that you start to parse through exactly what the implications are that you can translate into fundamentals and make decisions. Laurie, when do we reach 3% on the 10-year yield? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it could happen this year. Uh, again, our core call is that we're at a secular high in terms of real yields. So if we're right about inflation being contained and real yields being somewhere in the 75 basis point range where they are today, we think the appropriate equilibrium for rates is right around two and three quarters or so. Uh, that doesn't mean that we couldn't back up to three, especially if we start to see equity markets do well, in which case that could pr provide some confidence that perhaps we will see um, higher, higher rates and, uh, and more inflation in the future. Is a trade war bullish for treasuries or bearish because of the inflation pressures? Well, there are lots of different crosswinds here right now. Again, we just focus primarily on what we think the equilibrium rate should be. There's a very long-standing relationship between GDP growth and rates, and we're right at about that level right now. We think that the one thing that we'll be watching, though, is the uh, sort of risk premium that's required for Treasuries, especially as we get into more debt issuance here in the U.S.